there's always a little bit more buzz in the air. Any day we have an IPO to talk about. And today it's especially so because we have a would-be public company wanting to list on the small, medium and emerging board of the PSE. Now, I'm talking about audio wave media, and we have no less than President and CEO Carlos Jose Hinolan in the studio. Uh, Kaloy, thanks for joining us today. First of all, it's audio wave, not audio wave, right? Um, well, we, we're called audio wave in the Philippines, but we're called audio wave in the US, so we might call it audio wave. So we should just stick to audio wave or audio yeah, wave? Yeah, we'll, we'll settle oh, that. Right. Let's we'll, just call we'll it audio stick, wave. We'll stick to audio wave then. So backstory is you started this tech company 13 years ago with right. hardly any capital right. as a tech firm. Right. Uh, and now you've, you've since grown into a major provider of what you call multi-sensory branding right. experience. Talk right. us through exactly what that means. We're, we're in the business of good vibes. Um, what we do exactly is we complete the experience for all of these retailers um, using sight, scent, and sound. And uh, it adds to the bottom line of all of these companies. So what is it? It's, it's an audiovisual system, it's the speakers, it's the, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the sound system. What is it exactly? So what we do is we customize um, these experiences, um, which, uh, you go back to sound. So we make sure that music and messaging is in sync to what the, the brand promise is. Uh, we make sure that the visuals are there and we make sure that they smell good too. And where would I go if I wanted to experience that multi-sensory oh, branding um, experience? One way or another, you have experiences from all over. You might have gone to the mall, you might have gone to a fast food, you might have gone to a pharmacy, you might have uh, experiences buying your brand new car, uh, you might have gone to a hospitality or right. a, a hotel or a, a gaming industry where all over. And I just haven't realized it was all down to audio wave. You once compared the experience, multi-sensory branding experience uh, that you guys provide, uh, comparing to a first date encounter. Do you mean to say the awkwardness of it all? Exactly. Oh, okay. So uh, we believe that first dates uh, should be done correctly from the get-go. Uh, from the moment you uh, uh, invite the girl to opening the car to bringing her to the right place and then bringing her, her back home. So we firmly believe that um, the whole retail experience um, should be correct from the start till the end. From the moment uh, the, the customer works or goes into the store until the, the buying. So you want to provide a whole end-to-end uh, -end seamless experience. Exactly. So uh, it should be a complete experience. Therefore, the customer um, will remember you and they will keep coming back. And does this service translate to any real uh, benefits to a company's bottom line? I know, for instance, you guys cater to a few fast food as well as retail companies you were just mentioning. Right. Um, like, for example, a, a good thing you mentioned, the fast food. Um, um, all of these uh, entities or establishments really want to maximize the turnover of their tables. Um, uh, so fast food, you don't really want people to linger too much. So what we do is we play fast tempo music. Um, and that being said... And that changes behavior. Exactly. Uh, people tend to uh, move a little bit faster inside. Uh, they eat and, and then they leave, therefore allowing more customers to actually use the table. And so I, you're saying that if I want to go and sit down and work somewhere for a few hours, I shouldn't go to a restaurant or a cafe with that's playing up-tempo music? Exactly. You want something, if you want to linger, you want something slower. Uh, uh, you want something like loungy music. Therefore, uh, people will sit down, have their coffee, and linger. All right. Let's take a look at the nitty-gritty of your IPO. You're looking to list on the SME board mm -hmm. of the PSE. Let's take a look at uh, the details. Uh, 900 million shares on offer between 1.77 pe pesos to 2.96, maximum price of 2.96 mm -hmm. as at, as of this stage, for a total price of 2.66 billion pesos, and your target to list uh, sometime in December. Is there a part of you that worries at all about the timing of this IPO? I mean, we've been talking about it on the show. There's an anticipated rate hike in the U.S. We're seeing a little bit of a sell-off in the local markets. Well, we really can't predict uh, the market, but I firmly believe that we're doing the right things. Um, we believe that our technology is fantastic and uh, we're ready. We look forward to uh, scaling this and expanding this all over Asia Pacific. And is that the primary motivation for this IPO? Exactly. 
Okay, so now you've talked about expansion and you say in your perspectives, you actually go on to say that the money will go towards new markets. Talk us through that plan. Right, we're looking at expanding at, uh, to the 10 key cities of China, which is huge. Um, expanding further in, in Indonesia, we're actually inside Indonesia now. Um, Southeast Asia, which is Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam. Um, and, uh, and the rest of Southeast Asia. Why those markets specifically? We believe that um, it's a huge market to serve if you combine uh, uh, the population of China and the 600 million of Southeast Asia. Um, we believe that um, we as a country, we're good at creatives and um, we're not just about BPOs. And it, it's a new industry that, it's a new movement that, that we're currently pushing. But then if you've begun looking at overseas expansion, do I take it to mean that you feel like you've saturated the local market yet or no? Um, we kind of like led this whole thing um, in the Philippines and uh, it's about time that uh, we believe that Filipino companies should go forth and scale uh, companies and technology such as this. Right. Um, the last thing I want to look at is the, uh, your earnings picture uh, again as put in your perspectives, major turn, earnings turnaround, what we're seeing, net income in the first half, first six months of 2015 was actually uh, minus 1.3 million, mm -hmm. and then you managed to turn it around to 53.8 million pesos. What happened there? Um, what we did when, uh, way back 2015 is we um, invested on R&D and devices, which we rolled out in 1,100 huge stores for a huge retailer, um, and uh, so we invested in that. But the nice thing, us being a technology company, is we're able to monetize um, our uh, software and hardware, and that's what we did for 2016. And so all of those revenues that you generated, which was quite a fair bit of sum, actually went into capital spending. Exactly. And do you, at this stage, already have any uh, insight as to how you would divvy up uh, earnings and revenues if you become public, when you become public? Right. So we're expanding and we're putting all of these uh, uh, proceeds into infrastructures and all of these large chains, and then we're going to monetize that. And try to bring the rest of the experience. Exactly. The, the experience that you talk about to the rest of the markets exactly. that you're trying to break into. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Exciting times for you guys at Audio Wave Media. I wish you good luck in your prospectus and your IPO plans. Uh, Jose Carlos Hintolan, CEO of Audio Wave Media. Thank you.